not implant allergy, what are all we need? First thing we need is first thing we need is money. Okay. Because you need to buy a lot of things. Okay. One is PCO dispenser with implant ampis, right? And what else? Bone grafts. Bone grafts. Bone grafts, membrane. Okay. Then implants. Then kits for scanning Kits. Okay. Implant kit. Yes. Implant kits and sinus lift kit. Bridge expansion kit, right? Yes. Okay. Then. Multi-unit apartments. Components, right? Yes. Multi-unit apartments. Okay. So out of this, what is essential we will discuss? First thing is physio and ampis. This is must. Any implant, whether conventional or basal, you need to have first this. Second is what implant you are going to place, whether it may be a, a conventional or basal, that implants and that implant kit. That implant kit. Sometimes it may not be interchangeable, adding may not be compatible with the noble bike. Okay, but some companies they are interchangeable, the same components you can use for. So you need implants and that company implant kit. Within the kit, what all the components we will discuss later. Bone wraps and membrane we are not using, we are not used for past 12 years, we are not used. So there is no expenses for us, there is a major uh, expenses if you do conventional. Okay, implant kit we already discussed. Sinus lift kit and the ridge expansion also we are not practicing. Okay, so this is also. So, since we are practicing only single piece, multi unit apartment, those also not necessary. So, the basic thing if you want to start single piece, now, this is the thing. And additional one more thing is the uh, welder. Welder, intra oral welding to emit all the implants. So boiling down to only three things. One is physio with ampis, implants kit plus implants. Third one is the uh, intraoral welder. Okay. So money part, this is the part. Second part is one is money, then knowledge. The first part we cannot give, but the second part somewhat we can try to give in this three days. Of course, three days is not enough. So in this what result uh, we need to know. Okay. One is we should know about the implants. What implants we are using? We should know about that. What is the design? Where it is indicated? Where not to place? What is the diameter? What is the length that is available? So these things we should know. And the kit, implant kit. What are all the components inside the kit? How to use that? What is the purpose of each and instrument? Okay. Second is, when this is ready, we can jump into uh, patients. Okay. So when you are going into patients, you should know you are going to place implant in bone, right? So you should know about bone. You know about implant by using the kit. You are going to place implant in the bone, but you should know about the surgical anat anatomy of the bone. This is where uh, we lack. This is very easy to understand the implant, the drill kit, small small components but the anatomy part okay this is uh, important in this four segments are it's very easy learning surgical anatomy is similar to trying to eat an elephant okay can you eat an elephant the only thing is you have to cut it in multiple pieces put it in the freezer daily take out three or four pieces then eat in the same way surgical anatomy is a little bit huge so how to eat that we are going to cut it in four pieces one is anterior maxilla another one is distal maxilla anterior mandible and distal mandible so four segments you are dividing because each and every segment is different from the other segment the anatomy is different anterior maxilla no sinus but distal maxilla sinus is there anterior maxilla you can get support from nasal flow but distal maxilla sinus flow 
Resume maxilla terigate is present, which is not present here. Incisive canal is present in the anterior maxilla, which is not present here. So each and every, these four segments are quite different from each other. If you know all this, if you are thorough with this, all the segments, then you can handle each and every segment very well. Then you can do full mouth also very well. Okay. So the key part is the uh, surgical anatomy part. Okay. And another part, technique. How to place? Once you know the bone, you have implants, you know how to use the kit, you are going to place how to place, what drill you have to use, how much depth you have to drill, where to place, how many implants to select, this and comes in technique. Before technique, what important thing comes before technique, before techniques, planning. Once you plan to build a house, you are not jumping and building no? the walls, the basement, everything. You are planning, you are giving it to architect and you plan before. So before starting a case, you have to plan. Then only you have to uh, give the appointment and do the procedure. Second is the real procedure. Okay. Once you place the implant, the surgical part is over. The next, you know, the prosthetic part starts. Okay. So now you understand the knowledge part, the implants, the sample implants, it was Implants, the kit, then the surgical anatomy, how to plan and finally how to place. Now we will first see the implants. So implants, this is a conventional implant. Okay. This is bone level. Okay. Over this, the gums will come. The abutment will attach here. Any doubt in this? This is conventional implant. This is called Okay. Basil is quite different. Okay. The bone will come here, the gum will come here, this part will be sticking outside. Okay. So this is the body, this is the neck, this is the abutment. So this is coming in two pieces, abutment separate, implant separate, we are connecting both with the screw, yes. but here there is nothing here, it is a, it is a manufactured as a single one unit piece. What is the theoretical and practical advantages? There is this micro gap, no, this micro gap is not here, so this micro gap if not properly handled, it may invite bacteria. Okay, if the micro gap is bigger, it will give movement. So the fluid will go back and out in and out. So you may the bacteria will keep on residing here, it may lead to bone loss and the perimplant it is involved. But here there is no such micro gap, there is no such micro movement. So it is very friendly to the gums and bone. You won't see any kind of perimplant it is there is no infection happening around the impact. So this is one advantage. Okay. So in this single piece, there are two designs. Okay. This is one design. This is compression design. These threads are called compression threads. That means when you put it in the bone, it compresses the adjacent bone. This surrounding bone it compresses, it makes the softer bone into a, a better bone. And another design is apical threads only. It's a long shank. Here the shank is around 2 to 3 mm only. Depending upon the company. Some company give with 2 mm, some company with 2.3, some company give with 3 mm. But here this is the basal implant action. Okay. So this is a problem in terminology. Okay. Both are called single piece. But only this design is the basal design. This is not basal design. But usually we tell basal implant, basal implant. Not all are basal implant. This basal design, no? this is a classic basal design. So this is a compression implant. So this is smooth surface. Everything is smooth surface here. Threads only near the apex. 
this part left fully open only shank but here this part is the rough surface similar to conventional impact this is the neck part that is a smooth surface because it is going to be in the gums not into the bone okay so these are the two main designs you see this is the tooth one missing tooth is there okay so this part is the alveolar bone okay now we are going to place the implant right crustally there is good bone height also good bone you can place a conventional implant okay place abutment implant first then abutment either immediately or delayed loading whatever it is then you can get them 